the early 1900s were not a great time to be a cow basically cattle or even pigs why doctors had just figured out that insulin was the magical treatment for diabetes a condition that affected thousands of people around the world at that time itself why cows or even pigs you see scientists were using the insulin extracted from these animals to treat humans they realized that the pancreas was the organ that was producing this insulin so they were growing these animals in large scale levels they were slaughtering them harvesting their pancreas and extracting insulin from the pancreas this was not a very good way of getting insulin why first off the animal insulin cow or pig insulin was not 100% the same as human insulin this was causing a lot of allergic reactions the poor performance of this hormone in humans it was not efficient enough basically when it was injected it was not doing its job properly and also there was a lot of costs involved in the manufacturing process and a lot of cows and pigs had to be slaughtered to get just enough insulin for one person so you see the number of cows that had to be slaughtered to treat everyone around the world that would have been a humongous number now do you understand why the 1900s were not a good time to be cattle well when scientists were trying to figure out how to make this process more efficient how to make insulin more efficient they realized something the consensus was clear synthetic insulin was the way to go and how could they make synthetic insulin they would be using genetic engineering you see during this time the early 1930s and the 1940s genetic engineering was gaining a lot of popularity over the world and scientists were clear that using genetic engineering that they could produce insulin synthetically and do away with using cows or pigs or cattle to produce insulin so how did they use genetic engineering to produce insulin before we understand that let's just take a look at the insulin structure the protein structure of insulin so insulin is a multipeptide hormone meaning it is made up of three peptide chains we have the a peptide the b peptide and the c peptide the a and b peptides are connected initially by the c peptide when it is in the form of the pro insulin this is not the active form of the hormone each of these peptides is coded for by a single gene in our chromosome and when it is produced in the form of pro insulin it has three peptide chains and in the endoplasmic reticulum once this pro insulin is produced it undergoes a post translational modification which cleaves the c peptide so the c peptide is removed from the a peptide here and then it is eventually degraded but the a and the b peptides are joined together by disulfide bonds you see these disulfide bonds here the a and the b peptides are joined by disulfide bonds so this is the active form of the insulin which in you know is involved in telling the cells to take up the glucose in the body so it is made up of two peptide chains a peptide and the b peptide chain so the scientists thought it would be efficient and simple to just take the genes for these peptides and you know clone it in a vector and express that vector in a bacteria but here's the catch in the 1960s when you know all this was going on the gene sequences for insulin the a peptide the b peptide and even the c peptide the gene sequences were not known they knew just the protein sequences but not the gene sequences so what could they do now they had to figure out a way to work backwards so they did something incredibly amazing in my opinion actually they took the protein sequences for the a peptide and the b peptide using the protein sequences they literally built the gene they identified the gene sequence and they built the a and the b genes by adding each nucleotide one at a time based on the protein sequences for these genes synthetic genes for a and b peptides were built but later on with the advancement of technology scientists were able to figure out the genes for these sequences they realized they were pretty close the synthetic genes and the endogenous gene that occurs in our body they were pretty similar nowadays we take the sequence from the human cells only and clone it in vectors but when insulin was first made using genetic engineering they used synthetic genes that were built using the peptide sequences this is pretty cool in my opinion so what they did was 
they built the genes for the a peptide and the b peptide and they took plasmids which as you know are circular extra chromosomal dna found in a lot of bacteria like e coli and they cloned the genes in the plasmid so they first cut the plasmids using restriction enzymes here maybe here and here and then they inserted this gene in the plasmid gene so here you have the gene for a peptide inserted in this plasmid and here you have the gene for b peptide inserted in this plasmid so scientists had actually figured out that the best way to make the two protein sequences was to clone them in separate vectors use separate vectors for each of these a and b peptides and then you know extract the proteins from the fermenters or the bioreactors and then join them together and add disulfide bonds that was the more efficient way of producing the active form of insulin so that's what they did they inserted these vectors back into e coli this is the e coli with the a peptide sequence and this is the e coli with the b peptide sequence so these e coli cells culture were grown in huge tanks huge bioreactors and the genes were allowed to be expressed in these bioreactors so from the bioreactors the a peptide and the b peptide were separately extracted purified because they might have been mixed with a lot of other substances that were not needed and in the presence of specific catalyst disulfide bonds formed between the a and b peptides giving rise to the genetically engineered insulin which was also known as humulin because it was genetically engineered human insulin and then this genetically engineered human insulin humulin was packaged and distributed to diabetic patients all around the world till now this has helped millions of diabetics around the world who don't produce enough insulin in their body so that they cannot regulate the blood sugar levels in their body this genetically engineered human insulin or humulin is an extremely efficient way of delivering insulin directly into the blood stream so that the blood sugar levels for these diabetic patients can be managed very efficiently so this humulin was 100% the same as the insulin produced inside our bodies which is why it was extremely efficient in treating diabetes Once again it was genetic engineering that was to the rescue of humans and cattle